Hi, I'm Dr. Diane Duckett, and welcome to another episode of Becoming You. This podcast is to help assist you in becoming a better, successful you in life and in business. I am delighted to share with you today on just that. We know that becoming a better you takes work. In fact, it takes a lot of work, work that we sometimes really don't want to do ourselves. So today, I want to talk about fix your focus. Fix your focus. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Becoming You. I'm so excited about uh, you joining me on this evening uh, to talk about Fix Your Focus. Yes, I want to talk about Fix Your Focus. As we are becoming ourselves, you're becoming you. You have to get to a place where your focus is not broken. Let me say that again. As we are becoming ourselves, you becoming you you have to get to a place where your focus is not broken. Many times in our lives, we can become so unfocused because of maybe trials and tribulations, maybe struggles and circumstances that are beyond your control, um, have put you in a place of stagnation. And when you are in a place of stagnation, that means you have broken focus. A distraction that came and took your focus, maybe. Uh, You see, you were truly on a path of becoming you, right? But because of that one distraction, that one distraction, it broke your focus. And when that distraction broke your focus, it broke something in you. Yes, it did. It broke something in you. And it uh, it broke your grit and your zeal. And when that distraction broke your grit and your zeal, you became numb to all that was you, all that you were becoming. And I know that you may be saying, well, what has broke um, in me, right? What has broke in me? Something broke in you uh, because of the distraction. It probably wasn't by no um, doing on your own, right? It may have been outside forces that just came in and just brought in this strong or this great distraction that just took your zeal, it took your grit, it took something from you, it took your power, um, it made you weak uh, versus making you strong, um, it, put you, it put you between a rock and a hard place, it stressed you out, it gave you anxiety, it depressed you, um, I can go on and on and on, but it broke something Uh, in you. And when it broke in you, it was all she wrote. Like, it was like you just like, just threw in the towel and said, you know what? I'm just going to just sit here and I'm just going to be right. Um, But that's, you cannot go and just be because there's more uh, in you. There's more, there's uh, some things that God wants to pull out of you uh, so that you can become, you know, you so that you can become the best version of yourself. Um, But when that distraction broke your uh, something within you, maybe your grit and your zeal, you became numb to all that was you, all that you were becoming. I know that distractions come and go. We know that. We know that, you know, one day distraction is here and tomorrow distraction is gone. But those distractions that want to stick around, those distractions that want to, uh, let's say, basically disturb your life, those distractions or disturb or interrupt your life, those distractions uh, that want to take you off course, those are distractions that I'm talking about. You see, the enemy knows exactly where God wants us to be. He knows uh, where uh, the the power that we have uh, within ourselves um, and that's why these distractions, I believe, come because of to get you off 
course to get you off focus. And so these distractions uh, that are so great, you know, in one's life can really put a toll, you know, um, on you, on your mind, um, on how you are, are being, you know, how you are being you uh, or even becoming you. And so they say that um, even like when you have like this distraction that like was probably beyond you, like this rough, this hard distraction uh, can be even, uh, what you call it, tra traumatizing. Like trauma can be in your body because of the um, distraction, because of the overwhelming distraction. What can that trauma be? That trauma can be emotional trauma. You know, emotionally, that trauma just like, um, is just emotionally draining you because of the significance um, and the power of what that distraction has become um, in your life. And so those distractions that make you stop becoming is the distractions you need to push through no matter how bad the distraction is, right? As a matter of fact, if the distraction is that bad, that distraction is meant to push you forward even the more. You see, because the devil knows how God wants us to become, the enemy will lurk in your mind like he will lurk to seek whom he can devour, right? And so when the enemy does that, um, it is to take you off focus. It's, it is to literally, literally distract you from really becoming and really moving forward um, because there is power, there is significance, there is value, um, there is influence um, in you, right? But the enemy doesn't want that to come out of you. The enemy doesn't want that to come out of you. The enemy wants you to stay stuck. The enemy uh, doesn't want you to um, have such an influence where it's going to change people's lives, um, even change your life. Um, and so the distraction comes because, you know, there's purpose. There, there is truly purpose in a distraction. And so that distraction could have come into your life because you were slowing down or you thought you uh, were untouchable. Who knows why the distraction came, but that distraction had to come to get you focused, to get you focused and get you back on course, back on target, back uh, to the plan that God had for you or has for you. And so that, um, and so that distraction should actually um, really truly benefit you so that you can propel in that which God wants you to propel in so that you could fix your focus. Um, I don't know who needs to hear this, but the reason you're not becoming fully who God created you to be is because you have broken focus that needs to be fixed. Broken focus that needs to be fixed. Why do you have broken focus that needs to be fixed? Like I said, it's from the distractions, that overwhelming distraction that just came and let's just say took your breath away. Um, that's the distraction that I'm talking about. That's the distraction that broke your focus. Um, and that's the distraction that needs to be uh, fixed, right? That, that broken focus needs to be fixed. It needs to be fixed so that you can move forward in becoming all that God has for you today. And so today I want you to really truly start um, really focusing on, you know, fixing uh, your focus because I'm here to tell you no matter what you are going through, you must begin to fix your focus again. Fix your focus again and again and again. However many times you need to fix that focus, you need to fix your focus again. Because what you have in you, the world needs. What you have in you, the world needs. What's on the inside of you, you have to crack open with a fixed focus. Now, I know this may be hard for many because what you are dealing with or had dealt with, you don't feel it if your focus can be fixed. Um, but can I tell you, your focus can be fixed. Why? Because where you uh, where you saw yourself from the beginning is what you need to reach for now with a fixed focus. So what you saw yourself, where you saw yourself from the beginning is what you need to reach for now to fix your focus. You may have seen yourself in a, a place where um, you was going to be financially stable or you was going to be doing something that was going to impact the world or you was uh, going to be able to maybe even change, you know, change how people viewed uh, God. Let's just say view God. But um, 
that's where you that's the thing that you need to reach for whatever that thing is or whatever that thing is that's the weird that's what you really need to begin to reach for now with a fixed focus so you may be asking what is a fixed focus well i'm glad you asked that question a fixed focus um is the lens you use to see yourself in your prophesied place um, a place that will give you freedom to move in a way you never moved before. A place that would give you a voice. A place where your dreams would become a reality. Um, you see, a fixed focus is when you are taking that camera lens. Just think about a camera. Just think about holding a camera. Matter of fact, pretend you're holding a camera and act like you're fixing the lens on that camera. You see, when you fix the lens um, on that camera, that, that lens begins to help you to become focused. Like, it it, 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 it gets into focus where um, that, that thing that you are, um, that you, are uh, uh, you know, targeting, uh, is what uh, is getting now into focus. And so you got to uh, take that camera lens and begin to focus that camera lens uh, to be able to fix the focus in your life of that uh, prophesied place that uh, you knew that you was going to be destined to go to, right? Um, and so now you have to begin to fix that lens, fix that camera, so that when you fix it, you, you can lit literally focus in and see exactly uh, where it is that, you know, you want to be. Um, and so that's the reason why you have to fix your focus uh, and fixing it on the place you see yourself. Like, so when you take that camera and you use that lens to focus on whatever it is that you are focusing on, that prophesied place, um, you have to fix it um, on the place you see yourself um, in. So what is it that you see yourself in? Like, uh, when you look through that lens, where do you see yourself. Uh, do you see yourself in your prophesied place? Do you see yourself healed and whole? Do you see yourself becoming uh, more of what you, you know, are today or, you know, which more of what you were uh, yesterday? Like, do you, what, how, where do you see uh, yourself? Uh, and I, I, you know, people may say, well, I see myself in a big house. I see myself in a fancy car. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your destiny. I'm talking about your purpose. I'm talking about your assignment. Where do you see your yourself in your purpose? Where do you see yourself in your assignment? Where do you see yourself in your destiny? Where do you see yourself? How do you see yourself even becoming? Like you should be seeing yourself become, become, um, because your becoming is just so great that you know you need to become. So what you see you must fix um, the focus on that place that you see yourself uh, or, or, or that you see yourself or where you see yourself. You must fix your focus on that place of where you see yourself and where you see yourself becoming. You see, I know that, you know, many of us may be grown, you know, uh, uh, grown adults, not young adults anymore, not children anymore. Um, and we know that when we were young, you know, and as children, we had dreams. Uh, we had, um, we had dreams. We had, um, intentions of how, you know, we saw ourselves, you know, in between that stage, in, the, in between the stages of our faith, our childhood, our, um, adult, our young adulthood. And some of you are maybe are, you know, now grown adults, you know, you're no longer, uh, a young adult, um, but now it's like uh, you really may not see vision for yourself. You really may not see uh, you becoming what you really wanted to become when you were 5 years old, 10 years old, 12 years old, 21 years old, 30 years old, and it seems like you still are trying to get there, right? You're still trying to get there. Why is it that you're still trying to get there? Well, the reason why you're still trying to get there is because you have broken focus. That broken focus is what's keeping you from the fixed focus that you need to become who God really wants you to become. We have so many distractions um, in our life, you know, that, you know, when the, when, once the distraction comes, you know, we are basically, and I'm going to say it, basically we become all in with that distraction versus all in with the prophesied place that God wants us to be. Can I get an amen? I'm going to say it myself. 
Amen. Because we need to be in the place that God wants us to be. And guess what? It takes work. It takes a lot of work for us to even get to that place. Matter of fact, it's going to take even more work as a, a grown adult to really get to that prophesied place uh, where, you know, you see yourself. It's never too late. It's never too late to really uh, allow your dreams to become a reality. Those dreams that you had of yourself when you were young, um, but now you're old. Um, and so now you want to uh, be able to be, you know, in the place that you need to be. Um, but you may be saying to myself, I don't see myself you know, going, going there, or oh, I'm just tired. Um, I'm tired of doing the work. I've been, I've been uh, on this journey for a long, 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 long time. And I seem, it seems like I'm not getting anywhere, but guess what? You can't give up. You can't give up on your hopes and you can't give up on your dreams because there is purpose. There is destiny. There is assignment that is on your life. Matter of fact, it has your name on it. And if you don't get yourself together, somebody's going to lose out. If you don't get yourself together, somebody's going to lose out. And guess what? We don't want nobody to lose out on our watch, right? So we have to be able uh, to fix our focus um, on the place where we see ourselves. Um, and so how do you fix your focus? How do you fix your focus? Well, one, I believe that you fix your focus um, by fixing your thoughts, right? Uh, the Bible tells us that as a man thinketh, so is he, right? And so what you think about every single day, what is on your mind every single day, how you think about a thing every sing single day, even how you think about yourself every single day, that is what's becoming uh, your reality. And so... If it's something, if it's a, if it's a thought of neg negativity, that means you need to change that thought around, right? You need to, you know, change your thinking to fix your focus to the place where you see yourself at, right? So that it can help you to become. Um, so if you're always, you know, really criticizing yourself, saying, "Oh, I, I don't um, amount to nothing. Nobody likes me. I can't do this. I can't do that." Well, that's the wrong thing. That is the wrong thinking. And guess what? You have to. Uh, begin to fix um, fix that, fix that thought, fix th that thinking that you have, even of yourselves, even the thinking and thoughts that, pe that, that you think people have of you, right? You got to fix that as well because, uh, you know, people don't determine your destination, but God will help you get to your destination. Let me say that again. People don't determine your destination, but God will help you get to your destination. But you have to be able to fix your focus um, by fixing your thoughts the way you think about yourself. You got to be able to think positive at all times. And I know that sometimes that's hard, you know, for some, you know, and easy for, you know, and easy for some. But guess what? You have to be able to do it. The moment you begin to fix your, fix your thoughts and your thinking, you know, and turn it around for good, you know, for a positive, for positive, for positive, um, thinking, guess what? Things are going to begin to work out for you. Things are going to begin to work out for your good because you decided you chose to change now the way how, how you think about yourself. And so whatever negative thinking that you are saying to yourself, even today, I want you to get rid of that negative thinking. I want you to, you know, throw that thing in the trash because guess what? It is not serving you. It is not serving you. The only thing it's serving, it is serving the enemy, the devil, the, the, the serpent. It is serving the enemy because the enemy doesn't, nah, nah, the enemy does not want you to change your thoughts. The enemy does not want you to change your thinking because the enemy wants you to stay stuck in your mind, right? The enemy wants you to stay stuck in your mind. And so in order for you to fix your uh fix your uh, focus, you got to change the way you think about yourself. You got to change your thoughts. And that means that you got to go and do something to help you renew your mind, uh, to re renew your mind so that you can begin to, you know, see the positive, uh, see the beauty, see the grace, see the mercy and all things that, you know, may try to uh, hurt you, uh, 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 betray you, or uh, suffocate you. You got to be able to change the way you think and you got to be able to change your thoughts about whatever it is that's keeping you stagnant, that's keeping you between a rock um, and a hard place. And so today I encourage you to, you know, think about what is it uh, that's uh, uh, as far as your thoughts and your thinking, what is it that's keeping you from truly becoming you? 
That's the question I want you to ask. As it relates to your thoughts and your thinking, what is it that's keeping you from really becoming you? And once you determine what it is, that's what you need to fix. That's what you need to begin to fix so that that, 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 that focus is no longer uh, going to keep you stuck, keep you stagnant. And so as a man thinketh, so is he. So guess what? Stop thinking those things um, because the more you think about a thing, the more it becomes your reality. So stop thinking those things that are not serving you. Stop thinking those things that you think is harming you or, um, you know, doing, you know, uh, doing uh, that's basically not in your best um, interest. Stop thinking those things. Think about you being a, a winner. Think about you being a champion. Think about you being um, here on purpose for a purpose. Like just begin to think a different thought so that you can see different results, right? So actions speak louder than words. So when you begin to think differently, guess what? You're going to be able to see um, results because of your thinking. Uh, another thing that I uh, suggest that uh, in order to uh, fix uh, your focus, um, you have to, you know, literally fix your focus on Jesus and not the distraction, right? Many times when we are trying to become and trying to, uh, uh, move to that place of our prophesied place, we tend to get distracted because of what's in front of us and we lose sight of, uh, focusing, um, our problems, our issues, our circumstances on Jesus. Jesus is a fixer, right? And so if we fix our focus on Jesus, fix our eyes on him, guess what? Everything is going to be able to work out for your good. When I'm reminded of um, Peter, Peter in the boat, when when he asks uh, Peter, when Peter asks Jesus uh, to bid him to walk on water, you know, uh, Jesus gave him permission to walk on water. And Peter began to walk on water. But as soon as a distraction came, there became some winds and some waves, some heavy storms um, that was just rocking the boat, right? And and the, and the, uh, if you think about being on the beach um, and how those waves uh, are coming, those waves were so strong that those waves could literally drown you. Like the waves that Peter uh, was dealing with, you know, uh, could literally drown you. And because of that wind, and because of the, the the heavy winds and the the strong waves that was uh that was hitting him as he was walking on uh the water he got distracted he got distracted and what happened when he got distracted he started to drown that's why you got to fix your thinking because when you don't fix your thinking you're going to start to drown and you won't be able to you know come up for air because you know, you're allowing that distraction to get the best of you. And uh, Peter didn't drown, but he was sinking. He was sinking because that distraction was, you know, pretty much um, overtaking him, you know, like getting the best of him um, until, you know, Jesus basically uh, told him, hey, Peter, I need you to look to me. I told you, you can walk on the water. And so if I told you to walk on water, I need you to fix your eyes on me. I need you to stay on me because the more you stay on me, the more you're going to be able to walk on water. The more you're going to be able to move forward into your purpose, into your destiny. But the moment you take your eyes off of me, the moment uh, you take your eyes off of me because of the distraction is the moment you're going to begin to sink. The moment you're going to begin to drown yourself because you're not stayed on me. You got to be fixed. You got to be Fix so much on me that no matter what distraction comes your way, no matter what distraction may uh, try to um, have you fall or or, or or turn you in another direction, uh-uh. You got to allow that, that, allow whatever that distraction is, you got to stay, keep your eyes stayed on me. Because when you keep your eyes stayed on me, guess what he said? He said, I will give you perfect peace perfect peace and 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 when he gives you perfect peace that means that you're able you know to walk and move forward no matter what the distraction is that's trying to overtake you you're able to move uh forward in that which god called you towards right towards your prophesied uh place so don't get weak in the knees like peter did don't don't do that don't get weak in the knees like peter did um but you know fix your eyes 
uh, on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Let me tell you something. Even when I look at Peter's story, Peter had so many distractions that was coming his way that, you know, even as he journeyed uh, with Jesus, you know, he had uh, the distraction, you know, of people, you know, uh, uh, talking about, you know, his savior, you know, talking about Jesus, talking about, you know, um, um, just talking about him. Right. And, and Jesus basically turned around, uh, and told Peter, you know, you know what you're going to do? You're going to deny me three times. And Peter was like, no, I'm not. Cause I'm faithful to you. I will never, ever, ever, ever deny you. But as soon as, you know, they, uh, got Peter, you know, to the side, Peter literally denied, uh, Jesus, but Jesus already knew that that was going to happen. And so Jesus didn't allow that to keep him from his prophesied place. Right. And so even with that being said, uh, Peter, uh, went on, uh, to, uh, preach to over 3000, uh, three, 3000 people where, you know, people were getting saved and, and people were, uh, speaking in tongues, uh, because, there was purpose on Peter's life. There was assignment on Peter's life. Peter had to reach his prophesied place for that Acts uh, chapter 2 to even um, happen. Um, and so even with all the distractions, all the of the, you know, um, maybe unbelief that Peter may had Peter may have had, guess what? He still was able to fix his focus on the path. He was able to fix his focus on the assignment. He was able to fix his fo focus on the purpose that God truly had uh, for him. Now, sometimes we don't know. We can't see as far as God can see where it is that God has taken us, but we just have to trust and believe that wherever God has taken us, that um, he's working it out for our good and that he's going to allow us to end up in the place that we um, need to end up in because of um, because of um, where he's taken us. And so don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged um, if you're not where you need if you're not where you need to be. But don't be like Peter. Don't be like Peter and get distracted by the winds and the waves and not be able to fulfill uh, the plans and the purpose that God has for your life. Um, because God, in the midst of all, in the midst of it all, he wants you to become you. Even when I look at Peter's story, I'm, I'm on Peter right now. Even when I look at Peter's story, Peter was becoming, um, and he was becoming through those distractions, right? He was becoming through those distractions, even though he got caught up, you know, in allowing the distraction to, um, uh, try to defeat him or get the best of him. He still shook it off. He shook it off and he refocused himself. See, some of you need to refocus yourself so that you can get to your prophesied place so that you can get to the assignment that God has for you. And so what, it, so what, um, um, what, uh, distraction is keeping you from refocusing, re, uh, refocusing and fixing, excuse me, your focus on that prophesied place. God wants you whole. God wants you healed. God wants you in, in your purpose. God wants you to be where he wants you to be. And so never doubt that, um, that which God wants you, that which where God wants you, uh, to be. Another thing is, um, you have to, uh, fix, uh, your focus on the path. Um, I'm always praying, you know, God light, light a path. Like, cause, um, if God lights that path and he shows me the way I'm going to follow that path because that's the path that he is leading me on. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, uh, 23, 19, it says, listen, my son, and be wise and set your heart on the right path. That's what it says. Uh, listen, my son. And be wise and set your heart on the right path. Now, let me ask you this question. Is your heart set on the right path? Are you looking at different types of paths? Um, are you looking at different types of paths? And if you are looking at different types of paths, are you looking at the right path? Because you see, every day there are different paths for us to take. And we can choose daily the path. We can choose daily the path we want to take. And it's up to us to choose the right path. Um, and so what path does God have you on that you need to stick to and not deviate from the path? I believe that when God sets a path for us, that's the path he wants us to stay on. But sometimes, there you go, those distractions will come our way and we will deviate from that path where because something, why do we deviate? Like, why do we really deviate from the path? Maybe that, that, that path 
that that maybe the path, not the right path, but that wrong path, uh, looked so good, right? It looked so good. It was pleasing to the eye. It was pleasing to the ear. Um, it was, you know, it made your heart feel good. But it 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 turned you right. It turned you uh, into a wrong direction, a direction that you should not have went in the first place. Um, and so you chose to take that wrong path because you thought that path was going to fulfill a need. You thought that path uh, probably was going to make you happy. You thought that path, yeah, was going to bring you happiness. You thought that path was going to do something different from you, uh, for you, but in all in all, because when you choose, when you chose that path, that path really didn't make you feel so good. That path probably made you feel some type of way. That path may have made you feel, you know, some guilt and shame, you know, that, you know, you know, you should have took, taken that path in the first place. Um, and so what God is doing, he's trying to steer you back into the right path that you should go. He wants you to choose the right path. And as you are turning back towards God um, and turning back towards that right path, God is going to begin to fix the path, right? He's going to begin to fix the path and begin to allow you to move uh, with that path because that is the path that he's chose you. And so even if you are hearing this um, on today, you know, is there a path that you chose that you know God told you not to turn to? And if so, rethink about why you chose that path. What did that path do to you? What did that path do for you? You know, did it help you or did it harm you? Um, because most of the times when we choose a path that God did not choose for us, is a, a path that's going to, you know, truly um, hurt us, right? Um, not physically hurt us, um, but emotionally hurt us. Um, and so what is that path? So if that if that's a path that you're on, I suggest that you get off that path and that you uh, uh, get off that path and jump back on to the right path that God has you on. Um, because the path that God has you on, he doesn't want you to deviate from. And hopefully, you know, uh, when you get back on that path, you will be able to move forward in that prophesied place that God wants you to be in. You know what I think? I think that when you are on the right path, um, you will have uh, some uncertainty. Uh, you may ask the question, does God really hear my prayers? You know, or you may be on, uh, when you choose that right path, uh, you're taking a risk, right? Because choosing the right path, um, you, it's, it's, it's risk. That's how you know when you're on, a, a, on the right path because there's going to be uncertainty, there's going to be risk, um, and there's going to be potential uh, disruptions. And so when you're taking a risk, um, uh, does God really want me to go this way? When we look back at Peter, let's look at him. He took a risk, but even though Jesus told him he can walk on water, that was, you know, he still took a risk. Cause I sometimes think that maybe Peter, Peter truly didn't trust the words of Jesus when he gave him permission to walk on that water, but he took a risk and he walked on that water. Um, and so sometimes when you're taking a risk, you know, you, you may have the question, does God really want me to go this way? Or does God really want me to do this? Or God, or does God really want me, uh, to walk on water or, or, or is he just saying, just go ahead and walk on the water, right? But no, Jesus gave him permission to walk on water. And so in his mind, he's trusting, but he's taking a risk at the same time. And so the right path, uh, will also, um, have potential, uh, disruption, um, you know, you'll have these questions. How is this all going to work out for me? How is God going to fulfill his plan and, 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 and destiny, uh, for my life? Um, you know, because of this, this, this disruption that took place. Once again, Peter, you know, had potential, uh, disruptions, you know, the winds and the waves, you know, uh, tried to knock him out, you know, when he denied Jesus three times. Um, but still, he was able, it all worked out for his good. He was able to go and preach to over 3,000 people to get them saved, uh, to get them to speak in, you know, um, speak in tongues, another language. Uh, so, yeah, his purpose, his prophesied p place um, uh, g got him, uh, got him to where he wanted to, uh, got him to where he uh, needed to be 
um, because that was his, that was the right path that he was taking, and that was his prophesied place. Um, so if we trust the Lord with all of our hearts and we lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, he will direct our path. And so we cannot lean to our own understanding. We cannot lean to our own understanding. We cannot say, well, I'm going to do this. I don't care what God say. I'm going to do this. No, we cannot lean to our, our, own, our own understanding. We cannot try to come up with something for or reason why we should be doing something. No, we should not be doing that because that is our own understanding. But we must allow God to direct our path, direct our path in every area of our life because when he directs our path, that means that, you know, we he's allowing us to have a fixed focus um, so that, you know, we can reach that prophesied place. Um, and so when we trust the Lord, he will surely lead us to the right path. It's our responsibility to choose the right thing, even if it brings pain. Because when you're on the right path and when you have a fixed focus, sometimes it's going to bring pain. And it may not be the pain that you want to feel, but sometimes it's going to bring pain. Um, but you got to have a fixed focus because God wants you to become all that he wants you to become. He wants you to become you. And so you have to uh, get to the point. And I, my prayer for you today is, is that you begin to fix your focus. Fix your focus on the things of God. Fix your focus on the right thing. Um, because when you fix your focus on the right thing, God's going to lead you in a path that you should go. And he's going to lead you on the right path. And so fixing your focus, yes, it's going to take some work. Um, it's going to take some hard work. Uh, it's probably going to take some sleepless nights. It's probably going to take you being on your knees, you know, um, for long periods of time. It's going to probably take some meditation. Um, but guess what? It's worth it. It's worth you fixing your focus so that you can get to your prophesied place, uh, the place where God wants you to be. Because once you get to your prophesied place, you'll see how God um, has allowed you and is allowing you to become you. It's all about you becoming you. It's all about you becoming whole. It's all about you getting to that place where, you know, you are changing lives, changing generations, changing things, changing the narrative of, you know, uh, people's hope. You know, you're going to give people hope again because you chose to change your focus. You chose to fix your focus um, so that you can wind up at your prophesied place. I don't know who needed to hear this, but hopefully... This has really helped you and blessed you um, on today. Um, I know that, you know, being in a pandemic sometimes doesn't help because being in a pandemic actually gives you an excuse uh, to stay stuck, right? It gives you an excuse to stay stuck. But guess what? No more excuses because the pandemic can't, um, can't win. The pandemic can't put you out of position. The pandemic doesn't have no place or authority for what God wants to do in your life. And so don't use the pandemic anymore as an excuse for you to become and for you to reach your prophesied place. Do you know that major things are happening during this pandemic? People are really moving, uh, doing, and being uh, who God has called them to be because of the pandemic. You see, before the pandemic, people were busy, so busy, 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 that they couldn't even stop to fix their focus. They couldn't even stop to really hear the voice of God. They couldn't even stop to meditate on what God uh, wanted them to do. They couldn't even stop to even uh, get themselves, uh, give themselves an intention of, you know, what they wanted to uh what they want their life to look like, you know, on a daily basis. And so God has given you this opportunity to really, truly become all that he wants you to become. Like I said, I say this, this is like free time, free time for you to really get to know God, really get to know yourself, really fix the focus um, that you need to fix, fix your focus on the things um, above and not the things below um, because God wants the best for you. God wants you to really truly uh, thrive and flourish um, in this uh, thing that we call life, you know, this life. Um, but people, somebody's waiting for you to become, somebody's waiting for you to fix your focus so that you can be 
uh, so that you can be on assignment because you are their assignment. You are their assignment. And so whatever distraction has come your way, whatever distraction has deviated you from God's purpose for your life, I'm suggesting to you today that you begin to really fix your focus to get back to where God wants you to be because that's what it's all about. It's all about you getting back to where God wants you to be. I'm reminded of the biblical story, Adam and Eve, like when God told them not to go into the, uh, not to eat from the tree, uh, um, uh, the tree of knowledge. Uh, I believe that, you know, Eve was so, uh, inquisitive. Like she was like, she had a mind where it was like inquiring minds, uh, want to know. Um, she chose to disobey, you know, God and did what God told her not to do and then turned around and, and had Adam, you know, disobey as well. And Adam, you know, and Eve were, um, be, I, I, well, yeah, I'm going to say it. They were kicked out of their prophesied place. They was kicked out of the garden because that was the prophesied place that God wanted them to be. And so, and to live and to be happy and to enjoy life and to really uh, take care of God's garden and the animals and all that stuff. And so, because of the disobedience, God was like, you know what? I really can't have you here anymore. So, you're going to have to go out there and fend for yourself. And basically, that's what happened. They had to go out there and f uh, fend for themselves. And um, we don't know, you know, what really happened uh, to Adam and Eve because... Um, it doesn't say anything about the, their end, um, but we know that they had children. Uh, we know that they had to work hard. We know that they had to, well, Eve had to um, have pains and childbearing and all of that stuff. But we never really, uh, we never really uh, see how they uh, become, um, really become and end up in maybe another prophesied place because the prophesied place that was for them uh, they could no longer have. And so you don't want to be in that p position where you're disobeying um, because of um, a broken focus uh, or um, a distraction where, um, you know, God won't allow you to participate in your prophesied place. All right? Um, you don't want that to happen. And so really think about where you are today um, and think about where you want to be. Of course, you want to be in your prophesied place. What is that prophesied place that God um, has for you? Where is that, what is that? Where is that prophesied place you see yourself in? Um, because that's where God wants you to be. He doesn't want you to be in someone else's prophesied place, but he wants you to be in your own prophesied place. And that's why it is very important for you to fix your focus and to fix it so that you can move forward. Fixing your focus is what's what's needed right now so that you can get back on track so that you can get back on track from all of those um disruptions all of those distractions um all of those uncertainties all of those things that took you off course in the first place so i encourage you today to fix your focus and to fix your focus on god fix your focus on your path fix your focus on your thoughts um fix your focus Fix your focus so that you can wind up in your prophesied place. Well, I'm Dr. Diane Duckett, and thank you for listening to another episode of Becoming You.